Good morning everybody, my name's Gary and welcome to my DISH channel, uh, uh, all aspects regarding DISH disease. Um, this is the third video that I'm posting. Um, today we are going to go and see Liz Soames, who's my physiotherapist, and um, she's agreed that we can have a chat with her about um, what her ideas are on DISH and how she treats it. So I'm um, I'm hoping that that's going to help you guys. Um, I would like to also say that I'm absolutely bowled over by the amount of support that I've been given on Facebook. Uh, I really appreciate that some of you guys are getting behind me. Um, there's a couple of people that have made made a couple of suggestions. Um, firstly, that I need to make it clear that. These videos are my personal experience uh, of DISH. Um, everybody's different, we know that. Um, everybody's in a different stage of the disease. Uh, the disease affects people in different ways. Um, and the only person who really knows you truly is obviously your doctor. Um, and you do have to follow your doctor's advice. Um, please don't think that what I'm doing on these videos is what you've got to do. Um, I, what I'm doing is I'm um, portraying to you what my experience of DISH is, how I'm dealing with it on a day-to-day -day basis, what I've found that works, what I've found that doesn't work. Um, I've done a lot of research on, on the various medications and treatments and what have you, and I'm just telling you what, what I know. Um, I'm just imparting that information. Well, uh, whether you want to uh, use that information is entirely up to you. Um, but please, don't. Th I'm not a qualified doctor. Uh, someone, <laughs> someone said to me, "Are you a doctor?" Um, I, I did actually chuckle, really, because my wife sometimes says I, she thinks I, I think I'm a doctor, but I'm not. I'm, I'm not qualified. Um, but I do, I do do a lot of research, and especially when it's something that affects me personally. Um, so. I have done a lot of research into DISH. Um, I've tried an awful lot of strategies to, to try and help me. And what I want to do is just in, impart that information to you guys. Now, I'm hoping that for some of you, it will help you. Um, and I know some of you, it won't. Um, we're all different. We're all at different stages of the disease. Um, the only thing I would say um, is that I hear so many people say, I've been to my doctor and he doesn't know what DISH is. Um, and a lot of the general pra practitioners don't. And even some of the rheumatologists, um, to be honest with you, they're not really interested in DISH. Um, they just see it as um, a consequence of getting old. You know, your, your the ligaments are starting to get harder. Um, you start to get less mobile. And as far as they're concerned, it's just another old age disease. Um, but unfortunately, some people can suffer with DISH very early on, um, you know, starting in their 30s or 40s. And that's a that's a big deal because, um, you know, you're in the prime of your life. So the, the thing you want to know is, is how, how can you go about um, making your life better? How, how can, what drugs can you uh, rely on um, and to make your life better? So. It is a big deal, and I hope that um, the medical fraternity start to take it more seriously. Um, so, yes, um, I'm not a doctor. Uh, I don't confess to being a doctor. Um, what I'm putting up on these videos is my own personal experience. I really hope that it it helps you. Um, so from 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 this point on, we're going to go uh, and see Liz later on. Um, I'll hopefully be able to join all these bits up, and um, I'll see you later. Thank you. Hello to the Dish family. Um, as promised, I've come to Toaster to see my physiotherapist, Liz Soames. Um, I'm going to ask Liz a few questions today. So I just thought I'd introduce uh, and I'm going to come out of shop now and leave leave Liz to answer a few questions. She's a bit nervous, a bit like me really. Thanks Gary. <laughs> so Liz, just introduce yourself. Uh, hi, my name's Liz Soames. Um, I'm actually uh, regarded as a musculoskeletal clinician. That's my specialist. Most of my training has been, or all of my training has just been in musculoskeletal work. Okay and was you aware of DISH before you started treating me? 
Um, yeah, I didn't know a lot about DISH, but I was aware of it about before I started treating you and, and an awareness around the, the fact that it belongs to the ankylosing spondylitis family and it's a form of that sort of bone degeneration, bone change sort of thing. Didn't know a lot about it, but like any other conscientious practitioner, you go and research what you what you going to be dealing with. Yeah. So yeah, learned quite a bit with, with the treatment with Gary so far. Good. Okay. Um, do you think there's enough awareness of DISH within the medical fraternity? Um, probably not, because it's one of these subtle types of conditions that can creep on a little bit, um, or creep in general. Then I think one of the biggest problems about that is that because it's not a sudden thing that that develops very quickly, it's relatively slow burning. Then, and due to where it affects the spine, it can easily be sort of disregarded as postural tension or just stress related and things like that. And I think that's one of the biggest problems. And we see that in quite a lot of different sort of musculoskeletal conditions anyway. Okay. Um, so having, now you know about this a little bit more and since you've been treating me, um, what do you see the sort of physiotherapist's role in treating DISH? I think when you're looking at treating any sort of patient, we need to have a look at the area that it generally affects, and with you it's your mid-thoracic spine. Um, but that's quite a busy area in, in us from an anatomical point of view and a functional point of view anyway. So you've got the mobility of your whole spine, and we know that's a unit, so if it's stiff in one bit, it'll get stiff everywhere else, but also you've then got your uh, the interaction of your shoulder girdle, um, and also the breathing of your ribs. So from my point of view, what we want to try and do is make sure that all of those other bits surrounding that mid-thoracic spine are still maintained as, we, as best we can make them, uh, make sure that their function is normal, and make sure that actually you can sort of live with it a little bit easier. Okay, and so do you see the sort of long-term um, prognosis of living with this, do you see it as being a manageable thing or do you think it's going to degenerate and cause problems later on down the road? I think one of the things that's generally not very well understood or maybe appreciated is the better word is that all musculoskeletal conditions, the patient can manage them better when they function right and they're strong. You know, so as long as that has a fundamental part in any sort of treatment programme, then your, your living with the dish we, we should be a bit easier, really. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, so, what are we going to do today? So today, um, so your particular dish manifests it's around, particularly around that sort of T4, T5, particularly down to T6, but up and below that, we know that. But from a from a postural stress point of view and just a human being point of view, that's where we hold a lot of tension. Our mid-back holds stuff because it's the sport supporting our arms and our shoulder blades. So what our aim today would be to make sure is that the, the muscles that are guiding your thoracic spine and your scapulars are in good nick, to use a little bit of a colloquialism, but make sure that they're, they can contract well, make sure that they've got the range of movement and the mobility that they need. We work quite a lot with that uh, connective tissue to your middle of your back anyway. Um, so another, another problem with DISH is that because it's restricting your movement, then the tissues get restricted around it. So most of our treatment is based around making sure that the tissues in your mid-back, your shoulders and all those associated muscles, and eventually we'll come around your chest just to be when we think that that's time and that's appropriate in that treatment, just to make sure that everything moves, glides. So yeah, so we're going to do some... You've mentioned in the past to me um, myofascial um, tissue. Can you just explain that to what that is to the dishes? Right, so myofascia, apologies to any vegans because this is a meat analogy, but we've got to appreciate that we're exactly the same construct as all other muscle tissue, which a lot of us eat. Um, but myofascia is like the cling film around it. But the most important thing about myofascia is it gives us structural strength, gives us structural integrity, and it's really very strong. You can't really, you can't stretch really myofascia. It can move and glide, but so we need to make sure the techniques that we use in myofascial release is to make sure that the, the fascia has the ability to glide. That's not the quite the right, right word, but just to be able to move freely when muscles are contracting and pulling you and that you've got no bolted down restrictions at all. So that's the use of those, some of the tools that we're gonna to use today. Okay, lovely. Right, um, 
Let me just jump back in. Thank you very much for some of those explanations from Liz. Um, I'm going to let her get on with her job now and um, hopefully I can just put a few clips of some of the techniques that she's using and uh, put them into the video. Okay, cheers. Right. Right. Speak up as well. <laughs> um, so what we're going to do now, Gary, we're going to just assess you to see what's changed from last time, if anything, and how you're feeling. And let's see if what we can see with your movement. If you come and sit down, I'm just going to drop the couch down a wee bit. All right, so like we've done before, let's just see what your mid-back's doing. So if you squeeze your shoulder blades back together for me. So you're still tighten those upper traps. This time, squeeze them together, but try and get them low. So go together and down. That's it. So you're coming down from here. That's it. Together, together. No, no, that's further apart. That's it. That's better. No pinching in there, though. No, no. Just, just tight. Cool. Like normal, one hand on top of the other. Bring your arms up towards your ears. It's quite tight and restricted today, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, cool. And then this time, hands on your shoulders for me. Let's have a look at your rotation. Make sure your sit bones don't move. Right. It's not bad for you. Let's do that again with me, just anchoring you in place. Turn it, no, 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 this one. It's not too bad at all, mate. But it's the right hand side that I can't. It is. I can't turn to the right. And like we said before, when you're assessing like this, most of your movement comes from your thought, from your lumbar spine anyway. But we need to see how, well, from my point of view, from a tissue point of view, how much drag, how much restriction we can see. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Let's get you face down and let's do some of the preliminary stuff. stiff spot in it. Yeah. How painful is that? Not too bad? No, it's just stiff today. Okay. All right. Let's just loosen this up a little bit for me. So like we always do working up through these thoracic erector spinae muscles. Your right side for you is generally your worst, but yeah. again, you're right-handed, aren't you also? Yeah. So, you generally see a total difference anyway. Left to right, according to your dominant hand. But also, the build-up of calcium on the spine tends to be more on the right side because the heart, the aorta, is on the left side and that stops the build-up on the left side of the spine. It's interesting how these things work, isn't it? Yep. And again, you know, following on from the comments earlier about just because of where the discomfort and pain manifests itself, it's so easily, you know, could be mistaken as postural tension and just general life stresses and the Obviously, most of us are right-handed anyway, aren't we? So, mm. that's... A bit more mobilisation in this one. So, I think as, as Gary can feel, I'm nowhere near any bony prominences of his spine, this is all going through the rather thick muscles of your spine. So we're just going to go through the back of your neck. Just and through your these so we're just going to go through the back of your neck and the front of your neck. Just to make sure that there's no restrictions. That's horrible. Okay. 
should be as painful. That's it. Yeah. Right, Gary, we're going to continue this myofascial release uh, with the, the myofascial tool, or technically known as instrument assisted soft tissue mobilizations. This is called, this, I call this my butt and knife, but you know that anyway. Yeah. Right, so you had a really sore spot coming down here. So we'll hit that first. Just some gentle ones first. You okay with that? Yeah. Stronger reaction on this side, though, didn't you? Than most of it is. It's not reacting strongly at all today, is it? That end? It's mm. fantastic. This is normally where you get quite a lot of discomfort and also a big reaction where we use the blade to frame round each of the spinous processes. So this one should be fine. So normally when we go down another level, we start hitting about T4, you normally start grumbling. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Pull this across. That's a bit better. Right. Slide right down in that thoraco lumbar junction we've done before. So like I've explained before, this is quite different to Chinese cupping, where they just leave the cups on to try and increase blood flow locally, which we do sometimes, don't we? Particularly around the traps. Yeah. This is much more important about a very good glide across your back, picking up all of those tissues and making sure everything has a little bit more room to, to move. It also encourages like tissue flow, so the fluid in between tissues. It's worse on this side, this week. Right then, 
I think that's enough torture for today. Okay. All right, so if you put your hands on your chest again, let's just have a look at your rotation and let me know how that feels, okay? Yeah. So either side whenever you're ready. So this side? Yeah. Yeah. That looked clearer. Here we go, What's that feel like? Yeah, it feels a bit looser now. Moving a bit better. Just yeah. sit up nice and tall. Let's do it one more time. This way. Okay. So you sit a bit tall. Right. Yeah. Okay. It's done for today. Thank you very much. Thank you to Liz. <laughs> Okay, everybody, I've just come out of the physio with Liz, um, feeling completely beaten up, actually. she's uh, She really went to town today. Um, but I know that I will feel like I'm on a cloud later on when, it, when everything starts to relax a little bit. So um, I definitely recommend physiotherapy. Um, it certainly helps release all the tight muscles that, that come with DISH. Um, She's pretty good. Um, I call her the the pocket rocket because she, although she's quite small, she she really does pack a punch. Um, so yeah, it's uh, that's the end of the physiotherapy session today. Um, I'm hoping that again you guys have uh, picked up some tips and um, maybe can take something away from this. So the next video that I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be talking about um, alternative supplements and diet. So hopefully uh, tune in for that one and uh, hopefully we'll be able to come up with some tips there. Okay, thank you very much. See you soon.